today I'm going to be sharing with you all my tips and tricks to make perfect homemade cake pops, including a few hacks which help to make the process super easy. So first up is the cake. Now for simple vanilla cake pops, you either want to use your favorite white or vanilla cake recipe. I'll post a link down below to my vanilla cake recipe if you want to use that. Or my first hack for you guys is to use a cake box mix. Because cake pops are made by combining cake and frosting, you can totally get away with using a boxed cake mix and it just makes the process so much easier. Now, my next hack is to amp up your boxed cake mix. I've done a whole video on this, which I'll post a link to below, but this is how I'm going to amp up mine. So simply follow the instructions on the box. My oven is already preheated to 140 C with the fan on as stated on my box. And now I'm just adding the cake mix into a large bowl along with 80 grams of melted butter, three quarters of a cup of milk and three large eggs. Now, in addition to what's stated on the box, I'm also going to add in an extra quarter cup or 52 grams of unflavored vegetable oil. I like to use canola oil. Now, usually I would also add in an extra egg as well as some extra flavoring, but because we're going to be mixing our cake with frosting, I feel like you don't really need it for cake pops. Now, I'm just mixing on low for 30 seconds and then increasing it to a medium speed and mixing for a further two minutes. And again, this is just based on the instructions on the back of my packet. Okay, so that is my cake batter all done, so easy. And now I'm just going to grease or line an eight inch cake tin. So the cake box that I use today makes one eight inch or 20 centimeter cake. As always, I'm using my homemade cake release to grease my tin. Okay, and now you just wanna pour your batter into your cake tin. And now I'm just going to bake this for 50 minutes as stated on my cake box or until a toothpick comes out clean. So my cake's been cooling in the cake tin for about 15 minutes. It smells really good. And now I'm just running a thin knife around the edges to release the cake from the cake tin. And then I'm turning it out into my big bowl that I'm going to be making my cake pop mixture in. Now we just need to let this cake completely cool, but to help speed up the process a little bit, what I like to do is once it's at a point where it's not too hot to touch, then I like to just crumble up the cake with my fingers and then leave it to continue to cool. And this just kind of helps to speed up the process a little bit. Now, while the cake is cooling, let's make our frosting. Now, the next tip that I have for you guys is if you are using a cake mix, then do not use the frosting that comes with it because yeah, it, just, it just never tastes as good as homemade. So let's just put that aside for now and you know, use the frosting for something else and let's make our own super easy frosting. So in a bowl, add in 113 grams or half a cup of room temperature unsalted butter, 120 grams or one cup of icing sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla and one teaspoon of milk. And then using a hand or stand mixer, you just wanna mix that together for about four minutes until it's light and creamy. And you wanna do this on a medium speed. Okay, and that is basically our frosting all done. Now grab your cooled cake from earlier, put about three quarters of your frosting in, and then mix it on a low speed with your hand mixer. Or if you're using a stand mixer, then you wanna do this with the paddle attachment. Once it's mixed, if at this point you feel that the cake is soft enough to roll into balls, you can leave the rest of the frosting out, otherwise add the rest of the frosting in and mix. Now I usually add all of mine in, but you know, each cake recipe as well as cake box is slightly different. You don't want to add too much frosting if you don't need to, because you don't want the cake pops to be mushy. So just until it's moist enough to roll into balls. On the other hand, if you feel like your cake is still too kind of crumbly and you won't be able to roll it into balls, then what you can do is just add in a tablespoon of milk and then just give it a mix. And then yeah, just keep adding in a little bit more milk until you think it's at the right consistency. So this is the consistency of my cake now and now the next thing to do is to grab heap tablespoons of the mixture at a time roll them into balls and then place them on a lined tray they don't have to be super perfect just yet because i have another tip coming up to show you how to make them super nice and round Okay, now once they are all done, you should have about 40 cake balls. And now you just wanna pop this into the fridge for 30 minutes or the freezer for 10 minutes because we just need them to firm up a tiny bit. Now, once you take them out, they should be a little firmer. And now we're going to do a second roll. And what this does is it helps the cake pops become really nice and round. 
Okay, so these are really nice and smooth and round now, and now they need to go back into the fridge for another hour and a half, or in the freezer for 30 minutes, because they need to be really nice and cold before we coat them with chocolate. Now, in the meantime, we're going to melt some chocolate. Now, the type of chocolate that you use is very, very important, and I would highly recommend using chocolate or candy melts. So there's a few reasons for this. First being, when this chocolate is melted, it's nice and thin, which means that it's going to be a lot easier to coat our little, you know, cake balls. Secondly, it sets way faster, and so you're not gonna have all this kind of leftover chocolate dripping down your cake pop stick. Lastly, it sets nice and firmly, so you're going to have this nice crack when you bite into your cake pop. So you want to melt about 580 grams of chocolate. You can either have white or dark or even milk, but today I'm using white and dark, so I've got half of each. So I'm just placing some of the chocolate into some microwave-safe mugs, and I just like to melt mine in the microwave for 20 second bursts at a time, giving the chocolate a little mix in between each burst until it's fully melted. You can also do this over a double boiler if you prefer, and I just like to top up my chocolate and melt more as I need it, as opposed to kind of melting it all at the beginning. So my cake balls are nice and cold now, and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a cake pop stick, dip the tip of it into the chocolate, and then place it into a cake ball about halfway through the cake ball. And then I'm just doing the exact same thing with the rest of the little cake balls. This is going to help secure the cake balls to the stick so that they don't fall off, and then we have some nice cake pops. Now next I'm going to grab a cake pop and dip it into the melted chocolate and kind of swirl it and then lift it up and tap it lightly on the side of my cup to allow some of the excess chocolate to drip off. And then just give it a little twirl once you're done and this just helps to wrap the dripping chocolate around the cake pop and set. And then before the chocolate sets, you can decorate the top with some sprinkles, freeze-dried fruit, shredded coconut, whatever you want. Now the next challenge is keeping these cake pops upright while the chocolate is setting. So a few little tips for you guys. First is to just place them in a cup which is tall enough and heavy enough to kind of support the cake pops like this. Another is to fill a cup or jug with some rice or anything kind of grainy and then place your cake pops in there and it should hold them up. You can also use like a sturdy box and you know just kind of poke holes in the box and then you know put your cake pops into the little holes and that should work. And the last option is to use some styrofoam. So you can just poke your cake pops right inside. And then that is basically it. So you just want to do the exact same thing with the rest of the cake pops. Now while you're doing this, just be aware of the consistency of the chocolate and just make sure that it's still nice and runny. You can always just, you know, warm it up a little bit more if you feel like it's thickening up. And another thing to keep an eye on is the temperature of the cake pops. And this is because if they get too soft, they might fall off the cake pop stick when you're trying to, you know, coat it in the chocolate. So if they are getting a little too soft, just pop them back into the fridge or freezer for, you know, 10 minutes or so. These cake pops are honestly so, so delicious, and they're also great as a little treat for kind of parties or events, or, you know, even just for yourself. I think it's time to try one. Mmm. It's so, so yummy, and did you hear that crack when I bit into it? That is what you want. So that is it, guys. I'm going to finish the rest of these later on. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you do give these cake pops a try, then don't forget to leave a review on my blog. It really helps my content reach more people, and I love hearing from you guys. I'll see you in the next video.